moving on we would uh, quickly go uh, and start with our q and a panel um, we've received a bunch of great questions so i'm going to start off uh, almost uh, do we have radhika with us for this uh, yes i'm just checking uh, with radhika i think we have not we don't have her in the attendees or panelists right now let's uh, go so radhika is our product expert guys and uh, we were hoping she could join as well. So in case you all have any product related questions, please feel free to send them over here and we'd still address them, yeah? Thanks. Uh, so I'll start off with my first question. Uh, do we have custom CTAs like the Zomato example, uh, like an order every day? Do we have custom CTAs on our platforms as well? Uh, yes, in certain formats we can do that. And uh... If you could just share your email ID with me, uh, Anushka, if you could share their details with me, we'll connect with them for further details. How can we uh, campaign for an ad installation? It's a very simple process. Please onboard via self-serve business page, set up a campaign using our best creative practices. Uh, we have our onboarding team at the back end to handhold you through this. There would be certain KPIs which would be set up. Uh, you would have to actually call out your KPIs in the beginning. Uh, the team would sync up with those and then the campaign would be set up for the installs. Why is it that in tier two and two or tier three cities, uh, the female ratio is still low uh, and the Gen Zs don't hold on? So this is, I think, a more general question. So, I mean, either of you all could take it up. Uh, I didn't get the second part of the question where you said that Gen Z's don't hold on. But uh, see, like I said, you know, and that was actually the reason while I was talking about the male-female ratio, I actually got into the percentage dissection. You know, because if I were to just call out saying that on watch my male-female ratio is 70-30, 30, 30 looks very less as a number. But if you look at it in totality, I'm saying 30% of the 130. 60 million MAUs that I have, which still makes it about 48 million. You know, it's it's no less number, about 48 million on March and similarly about uh, 65 million, which is about 36% of 180 on share chat. So the number, the female ratio is nowhere less on the platform. Uh, overall, if you look at the ecosystem, that is how the percentage works on each of the platform today. And it is not only for tier two or tier three market, it holds true for every tier market today. Uh, Gen Z and millennial, I'm sorry, I didn't get it. But what I can say is, you know, so let's talk more about Gen Z's and millennials, you know, for a second. And let's understand why is this category very important for any marketer today? You know, it could be, uh, it, it's share chat and watch. It is your, you know, it could be an e-com platform or an ad tech or somebody like a, Amazon or a Netflix, you know, or anybody who's into BFSI or automobile or automobile accessories, it could be anything. Why is this Gen Z and millennial so important for me today is for two reasons primarily. One, either they are your direct users, you know, which makes them very important for you. And second, even more important factor is that this is the category, you know, in our in our offices, in our families, in our friend circle, who are the more who actually influence 90% of the buying decisions today. You know, what car I'll buy today would be heavily influenced by what my daughter tells me, you know, or my son tells me, or or a or a 23-year-old in my office is going to tell me. So that is the reason that Gen Z and millennials become extremely important for me today. And and that particular category is being beautifully catered by Monge as a platform today. I hope I have answered your question. If not, please feel free to connect with us on the mail ID. Great. Thanks, Seema. Uh, we have another question from Fazi Zama. Um, can we identify or target an audience through their income levels on our platform? Yes, we can. There are several levels of targeting available. Uh, once you connect with us and we connect you to our backend team, they would, like I said, before you, before the campaign starts, 
there will be a complete hand holding actually you don't even need hand holding it is so beautifully gamified you know that entire onboarding uh, process on the platform is very seamless you don't need my help but what we have actually done as an additional measure is that you know we have a team at the back end to actually hand hold you to the process in case you need it you know and we have experts for every field for example we have Neil support on you know in case you need something to you want to learn more about the marketing strategies. We have Radhika and her team you know who would actually guide you through the entire product thing. We have another team called customer support which would handhold you through the entire onboarding process. And this is all at the back end you know. And again I'm saying and I'm reiterating that 85 90 percent the process is so smooth simple and seamless that you would not need any of this while onboarding. Superb. Uh, now that we have Radhika uh, as a panelist on our Q&A uh, session, uh, I'd like to ask a question, uh, which is, I think, product related from my understanding. How does the tracking work? Uh, do you have your own pixel similar to Meta? Uh, so that's a question we've received. Right. Uh, thanks a lot for the question. And uh, yes, so for both types of advertisers or both types of conversions, be it app-based or web-based, uh, we do have functionalities to pass back post back events to us and to uh, track, you know, your cost per event that you've been able to achieve for web based clients and for web based conversions. We have a share chat pixel very similar to the Facebook pixel as well. And uh, you just have to, you know, install the code snippet on your website. And we also have the ability to add custom tags for each of the events or each of the buttons that you want to track on your website via the share chat pixel. And for app based clients, we have partnerships with the top MMPs uh, across the industry, uh, like uh, Apps Flyer, Branch, Kochava, Adjust, etc. So yes, for both types of functionalities, we support passing back of postback events. And we also have a dashboard that clearly, uh, you know, attributes each of those events at a creative, at a campaign and, you know, at a time duration level as well. Thanks, Radhika. Um, we've got another question. We've seen more top of the funnel campaigns perform better on share chat as opposed to conversion campaigns. Uh, is this a common trend in the BFISI uh, category as well? Uh, right. So that's a very pertinent question to be frank. And, you know, given the market dynamic, given the kind of audiences we have, I believe we should all try to be a little more empathetic towards the kind of, you know, propensity to spend or propensity to subscribe to newer products that our audience may have. Uh, BFSI and, you know, uh, other such uh, non, uh, like other such uh, sort of uh, serious sectors in the industry require some level of basic sophistication and basic uh, you know, qualifications are the audience end as well. Uh, of course, with all of, uh, you know, the unfortunate scams that are going on in the industry, people are all the more apprehensive to shell out personal details, to shell out sensitive details on our apps. So that is why it is natural that you may observe some level of restrained responses, restrained interest uh, for these type of categories from our audiences. And of course, you know, top of the funnel is something that that is very uh, non-intrusive for our advertisers. They're more than happy to spend good amounts of time on your website to scroll through it to explore what kind of products you have to offer so definitely we would uh, we this is something that we would observe and i believe this is not just you know specific to share chat or merge this is across the industry or, uh, and across the ads domain to be very frank uh, further, just to keep you posted that in order to solve this particular problem itself, we are working towards, you know, more sophisticated lead generation formats, wherein we can pass on the details of interested clients to you, whom you can follow up with. So that definitely should improve you, uh, to, to should help you improve the ROI that you are able to observe via our platform. And uh, yes, we, we hope that we can, uh, you know, uh, roll that feature out soon enough for you to explore. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Mark Fulgado. Um, can you talk about the tracking pixel as well as optimizing targeting based on purchase events? Right. Uh, so we 
uh, thanks. Uh, we have, uh, you know, dedicated business models that will uh, help you optimize towards deeper funnel events. And one such event, as you mentioned, is the purchase event. Uh, we have, you know, target cost for these actions as well. And we also have lowest cost bidding models wherein you can experiment around what is a cost threshold that you're okay with per purchase event. And in our share chat pixel as well, we have a dedicated uh, event or a code snippet for purchase type events. Uh, we're more than happy for you to reach out to us via email. Uh, someone from CMAS team, from my team, or from our clients uh, solutions team would, you know, help you install the pixel as well and ensure that the purchase event is firing properly. We can then get started with dedicated business models for a particular campaign and we can observe what is the best suited business model for your kind of product, for your kind of service that is getting offered. And yeah, we're more than happy to take it forward. We have quite a few clients actually running purchase campaigns with us on our platform today. So we'll be more than happy to support that. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I think this would be our last question uh, for this afternoon. Um, for how long should I run my campaign for testing the performance? What's the minimum budget uh, you'd suggest to start <clears throat> with a D2C apparel brand? Okay, that's that's a very brilliant question again. Uh, thanks again for showing so much interest and for uh, shelling out so many details with us. This is a very informed question. So we're always happy to receive such queries. Um, right, so in terms of, you know, what is the minimum viable budget and what are the settings that your particular product or campaign should have, we would definitely suggest somewhere uh, north of, you know, 5,000 rupees on a, at a daily level, that should be a budget that you should start with. When it comes to the learning phase of any particular campaign, more than the duration, it is the kind of traction that the campaign observes, right? So if you, you, if you go onto our platform, you'll observe that we already have recommendations around the kind of bids that you should add. So, you know, with any budget, say north of 5,000 rupees on a daily basis, if you try to observe, uh, if you try to set a healthy bid as per our recommendations engine, uh, uh, that should one provide greater scale and thus greater engagement or traction with our audiences. Um, now, in terms of the number of events, we generally try to, you know, at least have uh, north of 1500, uh, somewhere between 1500 to 2000 clicks for a particular campaign for our systems to be able to learn sufficiently and further to be able to provide good performance. So yes, uh, however much time that takes, you know, if you have a healthy enough bid, we are pretty sure that you would be able to reach that scale, scale much quickly, even before, you know, uh, the week ends. So yeah, with a healthy bid, with a healthy budget, if we are able to uh, land somewhere between 1500 to 2000 odd clicks for a campaign, that is sufficient learning for our algorithms to further keep optimizing towards the goal. Thank you, Radhika. Uh, thanks, Seema. And um, I think with this, we'll end our Q&A session.